Hello, hello, my beautiful friends, and welcome back to The Etiquette Show. I'm Conchetta Rose. Mary Rodwell is recognized internationally as one of Australia's leading researchers and writers in the UFO and contact phenomenon areas. Mary is an author, founder, and principal of Australian Close Encounter Resource Network, which was established in 1997 to provide professional counseling, support, hypnotherapy, and information to individuals and their families with anomalous paranormal experiences and abduction. Today on The Etiquette Show, we have with us Mary Rodwell. Mary, thank you so much for being here with us today. It's an absolute pleasure, Conchetta. So nice to meet you. And I'm so glad that you got up so bright and early in Australia to be with us to here today in New York. That's fabulous. You're most welcome. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to just jump right into it. I have a lot I want to ask you here. And I know you have all the resources in your brain. So the official, uh, the official representation by governments and science is that we as humans have yet to be in contact with sentient intelligent life in the universe, um, yet people continue to report alien close encounters on Earth. So if alien contact with humans is in actuality real, why does it continue to be repressed knowledge? Very good question. And the truth embargo is there for a lot of reasons. I believe, and certainly my research is saying, that the governments have known 70, 80 more years that this is a reality because they've actually been and uh, got retrieved, crash craft, et cetera, et cetera. But of course, this has all been covered up for a number of reasons. And the, um, one of the things that your audience may need to know is First of all, yes, I think initially it was to protect the public from panicking. They felt that if people knew this was going on, you know, what could we do about it? But there were other agendas that came in. And one of them was the technology that, in fact, they have reverse engineered. And we, we get some of it now. But it was all of this that made it even more crucial to keep it from the public. They also didn't want people to know that the, there was a reality to these uh, so-called abductions as well, that that would scare a lot of people. So it was a, a really complex reason why they kept it quiet. But the problem with that is, as you know, you've already stated with my work, I've worked with over three and a half thousand families and children across the globe that have had these experiences. And the problem with that is, because it's not acknowledged as a reality, these individuals lead lives of confusion, fear, um, absolutely terrified of what's going on because they don't know whether it's real or not. And if it is real, um, nobody's acknowledging it. So for me as a therapist, as someone, as a support person, that has been what I'm dealing with is the trauma of that truth embargo. Right, right. Wow, three and a half thousand, you said. Yes. Wow. So, okay. So they can't all be making up the same story, right? <laughs> uh, uh, Conchetta, what you need to understand is for a majority, this, they are absolutely credible. They will be ringing me up saying, I'd rather you told me I was crazy mm. than this is real. Mm. And they may be lawyers, doctors, nurses, social workers. They could be, you know, a farmer children you know three four five year olds are talking about this um so you've got this and it's right across the globe in terms of culture belief systems you don't have to believe in ufos to have an experience this isn't oh do you believe in it it's more well i've experienced it so i have to believe in it right. and that's what people don't understand hmm. wow so how, how do aliens seek to make contact with humans on Earth? In what forms do they contact? Well, there are many different forms and mostly on the, you know, on films and what have you, you've got the little greys we call the Zetas, um, sometimes humanoid ones, you might get reptilian looking ones or whatever, but there's mantis looking ones, ant people, there are crystalline beings, there are light beings. There are feline beings, lion beings. There's a whole range of different humanoids. And what you know, your audience needs to know, they've been visiting us all through history. 
Mm. But what we've done in the past is make them gods. So because um, that's been the way that we've perceived them with their advanced technologies and what what they have. In fact, they've, you know, and they've um, accepted the role of gods, I think, too, at least some of some of the species have um, as a way of controlling humans. So they have been visiting us all through the ages, all through the centuries. But it has been interpreted primarily as these gods that have come and visited us. And of course, in many cultures, they're still worshipped. Wow. So do you think, because you're blowing my mind a little bit right now, and I know I only asked you two questions, but, <laughs> but do you think there's an element in, in human nature that uh, gets an overwhelming amount of information and just says, no, 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 that can't be, that can't be. And that's what's suppressing some of this knowledge? Well, what it's a real cognitive dissonance for many people who, particularly if they've had you know, a higher education, they're a lawyer or they're a doctor or a psychiatrist or, you know, um, a physicist having these experiences. They know how it's going to be perceived mm. by their colleagues or the general public. So li living the life where you are a professional MD, for example, and yet on another level, you're having interactions with these different beings. And that in itself is making it very difficult because modern psychology, conventional, conventional psychology says, unless you, you can use your five senses to experience it, it's not real, which of course is actually a load of nonsense because we are multidimensional because we do have experiences outside our physical senses. Mm -hmm. And that is what has to change also not just the truth embargo from the government saying, we know they're visiting us and they're actually some of our ancestors because they are, um, because they've inter they have uh, interfered with our DNA, but that's an, you know, another part of this. Um, but we've got to change the whole psychological profile of what is normal in terms of we are actually multidimensional and we have experiences outside of our physical senses which everybody has, but most people are very wary about saying, oh, well, I, I sort of sense this, or I have a feeling about this, or I, some, I sometimes see strange lights, or um, I see spirits because, oh, that's a bit too scary, isn't it? And maybe there's something wrong with you. We've got to stop that nonsense and create a true model of our human experience. Yeah, it seems like you're discussing, you're talking about acceptance, really, <laughs> which is something that I think our human race struggles with across the board in many different er areas with acceptance. Um, but it, it is what you said, I think that that concept of, well, if I'm feeling something, feelings aren't concrete, right? So it, I must be creating it somehow. But that's wild. That's wild. Can you give us um, as some examples of both benign and hostile experiences humans have had with aliens? I can. And I will say that for many, uh, and why I wrote the book Awakening was because for many people initially, they may be really scared because who's coming and taking me at night? Right. You know, who are they? Why are they doing it? What's happening to me? Why me? All those questions create fear because they don't know. And of course, they think that, or maybe I'm just crazy anyway. So the fear may be I'm just crazy. So that creates a perception of the interaction. Whereas uh, over a period of time, they may come to understand that the beings they're interacting with are actually benevolent rather than, um, you know, uh, wanting to damage them in some way, but that takes a process of waking up to this reality and looking at it, whereas a lot of people are too scared to. So sometimes they will judge something as bad until they have better understanding of it. And that's what we found with our surveys, that when we surveyed 4,200 people with the Dr. Edgar Mitchell Free Foundation, we discovered that 85% of them, after they've gone through the fear, changed their attitude towards the beings and found that they had a psycho-spiritual transformation, 85%. Mm. 
15% were still fearful. And that is because of two things. We do, you know, it does suggest there is a small minority of self-serving types of beings, which, you know, is, is certainly are more minimal than the benevolent ones. And that is one part. And there's another thing that, the, you know, your audience are going to find difficult to believe. But some of the fear is because they've been abducted, not by these beings, but, but by a certain deep state military that um, take them to find out about their experiences and often traumatize them by interrogation, drugs, etc., to shut them up so they won't talk about it because they don't want the public to know. So sometimes it's our own people that are doing that. So it's quite complex. It's not just straightforward. So we've got some that may have their own agenda, but on the most part, we're seeing um, literally a benevolent interaction because I believe from evidence in our DNA that we are part of them as well, that we are in fact intelligently designed we are not just um, at the indigenous, um, if, if you like, homo sapien. We are actually, we have in our DNAs, DNA, some of their DNA. Now, now, how do we know that for sure? Do we have alien DNA in our possession somehow that we can test and compare? How do we know that? Well, I've gone into that a lot in my book, The New Human, and there are molecular biologists, geneticists, but the one that was the most famous that uh, talked about this was Dr. Francis Crick, co-founder of the DNA molecule, who said that he believed we were intelligently designed in his understanding of the genetics. And what they've done, whistleblower geneticists have said they've seen evidence of the splicing and the reattachment of certain parts of our DNA. OK, so they've seen the evidence that suggests we are designed we also have, and this is fact, 223 genes that are a sideways insertion of genetic material in our DNA that no one can explain, all to do with higher psychological functioning. After we had Cro-Magnon and Neanderthal, we had this missing link, and suddenly Homo sapiens sapiens appeared with twice the brain size out of the blue. No one can explain it. All this is part of evidence. There is, and of course we have what, we, what they call dormant DNA, junk DNA that they can't explain, which is 95, 90 to 95% of our DNA is still unknown in terms of what it does. <laughs> so um, put this all together. You've got a pretty good idea, something's going on. Yeah, I'd say so, right? <laughs> Wow. So um, what types of aliens are contacting humans? Aliens from our own universe or is there evidence of other universes? Good question. And it is more than just the physical extraterrestrial ones in our universe. There are some that are interdimensional, extra dimensional, trans dimensional, and some that appear to be coming from our future. Okay. So that just expands the picture a little bit. For you. <laughs> Greatly. So in, in, a, in a sense, we, we sort of don't know what types are coming at, in contacting in that, in that way because they could be coming from, the, from different dimensions, but also could be coming from a different time, yes. right? Am I understanding that correctly? Yes, absolutely. So contact with these intelligences can be very physical. Mm -hmm. But there are many that are visited by light beings that are coming from another dimension, for example. And, and this is why it's so complex and why the interactions can be very different. For example, what we discovered with the surveys we did with the Dr. Edgar Mitchell Free Foundation was that 70, out of the 4,200, 75% of interactions were out of body only 25% were physical. So that uh, takes it to a whole new level as well. Right. So when you, what do you mean exactly by out of body? Okay. So we're saying that their consciousness, their spirit, their soul 
mm -hmm. which is talked about as you know a consciousness we know that um we can go out of body people talk about astral traveling um going out of body having near, near death experiences and out of body experience for example um many people do lucid dreaming this kind of thing and of course remote viewing is something the um the governments do on the quiet to to spy on other uh, other governments and what have you and they use psychic spies to do that using their consciousness to go and spy i mean all of this is old news really right, right. Those into this what it's saying is we're not just a physical container mm. we have a consciousness that leaves when we die but we can also leave when we go to sleep at night we go out of body we you know we go to other places and what have you and a lot of people who can do lucid dreaming actually can control where they go and what they do this is not new news this has been something that you know many of the um, scientists are exploring and what we need to explore more is consciousness what actually we are and what is consciousness because we are all you know um, a physical being but have a spirit or a soul or a consciousness that is what is inhabited in that physical container. Wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to absorb it all, Mary. This is so fascinating to me. You know, some alien contactees refer to aliens not only in our own solar system, but underground. Is this, yes. can you explain, can you explain that a little further? Certainly there is evidence that we have some of these uh, intelligences have been living underground as long as we've been on the surface mm. and certainly there seems to be evidence of that some talk about some of the reptilians uh, maybe always there mm -hmm. uh, and also possibly some of the zetas some of the greys um, as well not necessarily all of them but there may be others as well as well as other humanoids as as well that have been there throughout the eons and whatever mm -hmm. The, the government, I believe, absolutely know this. Um, and again, a lot of this is kept quiet for lots of different agendas, sure. you know, um, because what they can gain or what they can um, conchetta with all of this is the truth embargo has meant that we are fed a great deal of information that's inaccurate right across the board in every area from anthropology archaeology biology theology you name it we have been given an edited version of who we are what we are and what we're capable of and that has to change yeah. it's time the public was told the truth because it's our heritage that's that's a very fascinating way of putting it too that that we we deserve to know because as you said it is our heritage it's it's where we come from and you know it's funny i'm i'm kind of having a silly thought of these uh dna testings that we can do to find out our heritage wouldn't it be fascinating if there was a section where you could be like 12 percent reptilian or you know what i mean like 14 percent alien in some capacity and then we could actually do research on what that means um i think it would certainly help in terms of you know genetic diseases for instance knowing where that came from knowing how it developed how can we handle it in the future that's that's a very that's an enlightening way of putting it so um so what are some of your insights on alien abductions well i will say in many cases they're not abductions okay. there is actually a consent part of this even although initially the person may not be aware that on some level they've consented so not all of them are um, without that consent except for the consent may not may be in their subconscious not in their conscious mind so if i take somebody in hypnosis to an experience that they've had where they've maybe had missing time mm -hmm. and wanted to know what happened on that journey what was the extra hour that they've lost that they don't know what happened but they saw lights and all of a sudden at, you know an hour or two later they find themselves back in the car thinking well what am i doing here what's happened so when you take them to that experience one of the questions that i will ask them in their so you know in in their subconscious 
super conscious state. And I will say, have you on any level consented to this experience? The most common answer is yes, but before I came here. So in other words, as a soul, before they're actually incarnated, uh -huh. they've had an agreement with a particular a species or intelligence that at some point they would have these experiences and I will actually say to them does that feel right to you does that resonate to you and they'll go yes but sometimes they'll say I didn't realize it was going to be that difficult or that traumatic or whatever mm -hmm. but there has been on that level a consent in many cases so this isn't all you know it's just that there's so much that in our conscious state we don't realize is going on on that other level of our awareness mm. and, th and that is bringing that together so that people have answers they can find out who these beings are on the book the craft um what people may not know is when we did our surveys with that four thousand people was 50 percent of them described having healing procedures on board craft where mm. they were healed from a whole range of illnesses um, when they were taken on board craft. This is not generally known because all we get mostly in the, in the fiction and the media is the scary stuff, the fear stuff, the sensational stuff, not this information. And that is what's so wrong about all of this as well is everything is generated through a, th a fear program rather than saying, well, hold on a minute. Actually, when they get to understand what's going on, many of them feel very connected to the beings that they are interacting with. In fact, they will, they will say they're my family mm. um, because on a soul level, mm -hmm. many of them are aware that they have been connected to that particular species or may have been actually one of them before they incarnated into human form. And that's why we've really got to change this nonsense that we're just a physical container and that we, you know, our five senses are the only true reality when we are, in fact, interacting with our multidimensional reality all the time with the intuition, with the knowing, with the sensing, with those insights, you know, those suddenly light bulb moments. Mm. And many of these that have experiences are given information, um, complex information it might be to do with physics, it might be to do with origin of the species. They may be downloading a whole heap of information, which is part of their communication with these intelligences that they've connected to. So this is there's a lot more to the experience than somebody just being taken against their will. So I don't use the word abduction. I use the word experiencer mm -hmm. for that reason, because they're experiencing something. And abduction always is about I've had no choice, whereas, in fact, in many cases, they have had a choice. They've just not remembered it. Wow. Has there ever been a situation where someone has had an experience and doesn't want to have any more experiences and somehow that connection stops, ceases somehow? There have been both adults and children that have, have actually said, I don't want any more of this. And, mm. and it has stopped and it's being listened to because the benevolent ones understand that we may go through periods where it's all too much for us. And, um, and they will respect that. But I've, I've often spoken to a few that have done that and afterwards said, I missed it. And I, after a while, I asked them to come back. <laughs> uh, so, wow. so there you go. Wow. Well, it is uh, a very, I, I, in my world, it's a, it's a rare experience. I don't, I don't think, I, I don't think I know anyone who has had any contact so to me, it would be almost like a very special person that got chosen to have these experiences. All be them maybe frightening, but it seems very special. It, it seems like people are chosen. Is that correct? Or do you think it's more random? Ah, uh, well, it, we found that it's intergenerational. So in other words, it goes through family lines. So that if someone comes to me, with experiences, I will ask about their siblings and I will ask about their mum and dad. Was there anything about mum and dad that was different or unusual? And they may say, oh, well, dad was all into UFOs. And I think, right, well, there's the intergenerational link. Right. And it would take it back. Sometimes it's both. 
but not only uh, not only that they will have children that are also having experiences as well so there is a genetic factor with some of them but you would be surprised at how many people are having experiences that it isn't rare in the slightest mm -hmm. in fact it's just that people don't talk about it because they don't want to be looked on as crazy or there's something wrong with them or getting judged for it but you would be amazed at how many actually do i mean every single day i'm getting another four five new emails of people having experiences every single day not just once a week right. um, that will give you some idea and that's the ones that know about me all right mm -hmm. there are probably hundreds more that don't even know where to go, who to talk to, because you don't go and talk to your psychiatrist about this or a psychologist, do you? Because you're going to end up in hospital medicated yeah. sure. or something like that, aren't you? So people are very careful about talking about it because so many have ended up in hospitals medicated. And I spoke about that in the wake, in waking of a, a young girl at 14, went to her doctor and said to her doctor, she was seeing aliens and immediately he, diagnosed her as schizophrenic, put her on a cocktail of medication. She nearly took her life two or three times with suicide until about 19 when she saw a talk show where they were talking about this and realized that maybe her experiences were real. Hmm. And that's when she contacted me. She's one person out of hundreds that have had similar experience, probably thousands, even possibly millions because of this truth embargo that says it's not real. Mm -hmm. And that's why for me, disclosure is so vital. It's not just, oh, well, we're seeing craft. We, um, we can't identify them and whatever. Who's, who's controlling the craft actually is what is important. Mm -hmm. And what are they doing here? Yeah. And, and what is happening to the population of planet Earth that is interacting with them? That is the bit that matters to me is what matters and to all those having experiences. Wow. Do you, I'm going to ask you a question, very off topic, but do you think that uh, things that happen, have happened in our human history in terms of mass disease or anything like that has any relation to uh, intelligent life, bringing it to us, trying to control our population in some way? Like the thing that comes to mind is COVID for me because it's, it's relevant nowadays, you know? So, uh, but I just, do you think they're trying to control our population? That's my question. I think we have human beings very much trying to control our population at this moment in time. So we won't get into that. <laughs> Whether uh, are uh, having interactions with the self-serving beings um, behind them, that may be the case in some but I'm going to take you on a little journey to the fact that I work with people in past lives, all right? So I can take somebody into a past life. Mm. And this was one particular past life of a young lady who was curious about a past life. Mm -hmm. She went back to medieval times where she was a wise woman, a healer. And she said that she was heal, you know, uh, put together herbs to heal the villagers and whatever. And so I said to her, so where did you learn about all the herbs and which ones were the ones to use and all this kind of stuff? Thinking maybe her grandmother or mother or someone. She said, I learned it all in the woods. So I said, so who was in the woods to teach you all of this? And she said, it was a little gray being with big black eyes that showed me the herbs that I needed to do healing. So there you go. <laughs> all right. Wow. Yeah. They've been with us all through history and the, uh, the indigenous peoples are, are in Australia talk about the beings, the Wangina that taught them and showed them where water was, how to live, um, how to, find different foods and whatever. And it's the beings from the Seven Sisters, the Pleiades, mm -hmm. that interact with them. They call the Wangina. So when you ask about this, many of these benevolent beings are actually have been assisting humans right. in, in, many, in many ways. 
Right. So that's a bit of a weird one for you, but just to give you an idea. Oh, I mean, I asked, <laughs> but I just, does it bother you sometimes to watch? I don't know if you do watch any science fiction with alien movies or anything like that, alien shows. Does it bother you sometimes that, you know, I, besides E.T., I'm trying to think where I saw an alien movie where the alien was benevolent where the alien was was there to be you know uh, sharing good information and in almost every other case they're trying to wipe out the human race for the most part right and, and inexplicably they just want to kill us does it bother you yes. to see stuff like that it more than bothers me because it's an agenda yeah and it's an agenda from our planet that are is trying to uh, to control the um, understanding we have of these intelligences mm. as that because they're, they've got superior technology, they're more aware that they can take us out at any time, so we must fear them. Mm. All of that is an agenda and it's propaganda because that way we are controlled. And you know, this is the biggest issue around all of this is because many of those that tell me about their experiences a lot of the time when they're on the craft, they'll be shown um, images of what we're doing to the planet and being told you can't do this anymore mm -hmm. to your planet. You're harming the planet. You're harming the environment. You can't do this to each other. This is not, you know, higher consciousness. Mm -hmm. And so the whole purpose of many of these intelligences, I believe, is to raise consciousness, not put it down into this barbaric, aggressive behavior that many of us on this planet still think is the way to go you know we kill each other if we don't like them or right. they're, they're the wrong color or the wrong belief or and i mean it's it's primitive mm -hmm. and it's 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 adolescent to say the least do you think <laughs> on any level they're sort of like fed up with our immaturity in that sense you know do you think they're just like these these people don't get it we're here to help we're here to like encourage things and keep the earth healthy and they're just ready to take us out at, because of this group think that's happening what they're actually doing is raising consciousness mm. and by interacting they you you know i haven't mentioned the fact that a lot of them have memories of going up on spacecraft and being taught how to use their awareness like taught how to use their psychic abilities such as healing such as um if you like using their consciousness to create a positive outcome and all of this this is what they're often taught on board craft as well as the true nature of humans and what our potential is so what they're doing, rather than saying, oh, well, they're all children, we can't do anything with them. They are apparently very concerned about our nuclear capability and that we could destroy our planet. So they've accelerated that program where more and more now this has been part of their agenda is to raise this consciousness. And the children talk about this. They talk about healing abilities. They talk about being able to sense truth. They, they talk about being able to communicate with animals and, and changing the consciousness of, so we've got these new upgrades of human, I call them, mm. with the higher consciousness. And these children are coming in in droves now. Um, and in metaphysical terms, they're called crystals, indigo children, mm. children of light, all this. They're also mislabeled as ADHD, Asperger's, dyslexic, and some forms of autism because they are wired differently and they don't behave the same. They're given these labels where in fact, many of them are these new star kids, the ones that are, have got higher awareness and uh, understanding. And we are labeling them all this because they're so different. Nice. What's different about them is you can't program them in the same way into that third dimensional limited reality and that is, you know, deliberately, I think it's deliberate to stop them being programmed into the old mindset, the old 3D mindset. And that's what I talk about with the new human. What do you think? I mean, it just all this information, you know, and, and I and I do see a through line in our society. This is this is I, I don't want to say this is just one topic, but this is just one topic in a, in a long line of topics that we're not giving 
all the information on. We're not allowed to form a whole, our own opinion because we haven't been given all the pieces to the, to those puzzles, you know? So, I mean, what do we do? How, how do we, how do we continue to reach? So I'm not being contacted presently by anyone, but I would like to reach a higher level of consciousness. How can I do that in my, in my daily life um, w- without the help of an intelligent being? It's all about frequency. And as you reach a certain level of frequency or awareness, then the in- intent that you have to connect and contact these intelligences is that they recognize that. They'll recognize you by your frequency. To give you an example of that, I was speaking to a gentleman in the US who had a nine-year-old son. And his nine-year-old son, as I was speaking to his father said, can I speak to Mary? And I said, oh, I said, so why, why do you feel you can speak to me? And he said, well, Mary, it's because of your frequency. (laughs) so we're as we get to a higher consciousness and and that's you know everyone that's raising their frequency starting to see a bigger picture starting to realize that we're all connected and and to spiritually want to grow you're you're actually bringing your frequency into a higher higher frequency which enables them of these higher frequencies to connect with you so if you have the intent that intent is going out as a frequency to these intelligences. It's saying, oh, there's someone over there that's ready now. Let's see what we can do here. So it's all about you having that desire to go to a higher spiritual awareness. And some will do it after they've had a near-death experience, um, a shamanic experience, a healing and you know, a healing experience. Everyone has a different way of accessing or being ready for that next step and this is happening globally so it doesn't happen just because you're seeing a ufo it could happen because you know you're having you're going and um, learning meditation um, for example Mm. which changes again that intent i want to expand my consciousness i want to have have more awareness in terms of who i am what i am what's this all about and and being a better person and wanting the desire to be a better person. That's what they pick up, that frequency. Well, I love that. Mary, please tell our friends where they can reach you or read your books or learn more about you and what you do every day. Very easy, either my website, ascern.com.au or maryrodwell.com.au. Google me, I'm on Facebook as well. Really easy to contact and you can see all the information there and there's lots of lovely uh, other interviews as well as uh, what the what the beautiful one can has done right now so very easy mary thank you so much for sharing all of your information here with us today thank you so much for getting up early and being with us today we so appreciate your time and change your frequency work on that thank you okay. bye guys okay. next time. Take care.